Hi, I'm one guy. A little over a year ago, I text messaged my buddy and said, um, I think we should record a podcast. We'll call it Two Guys, One Podcast, and we'll intro it like this. I'll say, I'm one guy. You'll say, I'm the other. And then I'll say, and this is the podcast. I didn't really have any other ideas than that. I just thought it was a catchy title and a, and a nice intro, and it, and it made me laugh, and I thought that would be cool. Um, he was a good enough buddy to sit in the studio and do it with me. And, uh, so we recorded this thing and we put it out there for my girlfriend and his wife to listen to first. And then we kind of rolled it out from there. We just put it out in the public truthfully and, um, people liked it and we got good response. And so we did another one and another one and another one. And now a year later, here we are. This is episode 50. And what I've done is I've cut up um, what I think are some of the best segments from old episodes. You're going to hear from all the way back almost to the very beginning. There's some segments from episode three here. And I think the most recent segment is from about episode 32 or 36 or so. But um, anyway, it's some good stuff. It's some stuff that maybe you haven't heard or you haven't heard in a while. Uh, If uh, it's not for you, just to hang around, we'll have a brand new episode for you on Sunday uh, at midnight. Um, but thank you for listening. Thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for spreading the word about Two Guys, One Podcast. We have a lot of fun doing it, and we do it whether you listened or not. But it is a hell of a lot more fun knowing that there's folks out there enjoying and laughing along with us. So um, keep listening, keep spreading the word, and uh, keep visiting twoguysonepod.com. Free funny every Sunday. I, I'm trying to find a level because you... You're hotter than me. I'm always hotter than you. <laughs> but two guys. No, don't get me wrong. I'm a cool guy. <laughs> Wild, abandoned sexuality of a stallion. Two guys, one podcast. What if I'm not a real person? Two guys. It's theater of the mind, baby. That's what it is. It's theater of the mind. One podcast. I hate chimpanzees. Anything I show you on the internet is fact now. Two guys. And this is the podcast. Um, is it weird that the room feels suddenly full? It does. It hasn't felt full before. And also, I think this is the first show that we're going to do where I'm pretty intoxicated. Are you drunk? <laughs> you want to have a taste? Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. I'd be a pioneer because I'd be a short, fat, white guy playing basketball, too. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And I'm the other. 29% of my meat's horse meat. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast, and I have both of the microphones on. <laughs> I hope it doesn't cheapen our relationship. I lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Welcome to it. Two Guys. Start over. That's all right. Welcome to I Two Guys. I did it again. You motherfucker. Welcome. Okay, but for real this time. No, seriously, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. Start over, you laugh. Yeah, I did. Okay, here we go. Fresh start. Take it from the top. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this... (laughs) (laughs) What is that? That's... I know. This is the podcast, by the way. Here we go. It's a loosey-goosey kind of night. I'm just telling you right now, you're tuning in. It's going to be that kind of show. Here's a little behind-the-scenes info. We sit in a room and record in this in a magical golden throne room. We record this thing, put it in the can, and then I edit it down so that you only get the good bits. We leave all the crap on the floor. So this is still going to be a good episode for you. I'm just telling you, it's probably not going to have a through line because it's one of those kinds of days, right? It's like a scrambled egg show. Just couldn't let me have a nice thing, could you? What are you talking about? <laughs> Um, let's see, like a week and a half ago, 12 days, I think, almost, almost precisely 12, it's either 11 or 12 days, and I'm too lazy to do the math. I don't math too well, I think that's been established, and neither one of us do. About 12 days ago, I bought myself a car, yeah. sir. You did, it's a nice car, man. <laughs> it's a very nice car, it's a very I dig nice it. car. And then you went yesterday and bought a car that could eat my car. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose, man. 
<laughs> you, you didn't. You, are you saying you didn't, with malice in your heart, say, "I'm going to trump my friend, uh, one guy, just quash his his hopes and dreams, no, dude's aspirations to rise out of the middling class and, and ascend"? This is what wealth really looks like. <laughs> no, God, no. Uh, <laughs> that's so fucked up. No, your plan to get a new car just happened to coincide pretty closely. With a plan I've been working on for a while. So right. I, last year, man, almost, yeah, last year, I I wanted to buy myself a new vehicle. But my wife's was much older and, and you know, just had a lot of wear on it that that mine didn't. And so I knew at that time I could not buy myself a vehicle before buying one for her. Right. I mean, that's part of the contract that you take on a little bit as at, when you get married. You're like... You know, we're going to do this in stair step now. A lot of couples do their phones upgrades that way, too, even. You know, okay, you get the new phone this year, I'll get the new phone next year. Right, so for me to get a new car, I had to get one for her. Yeah. There's no way in hell I'm buying two cars at the same time. No. It's ludicrous. you got to so, stair step that shit a little bit. Yeah, so I had to wait about a year before I could I could get one. It just turns out my plan ended then. Yes, but. Ten days after mine. Well, I got like a week in the sun. Woohoo! Uh, the good news is, I officially don't have the newest car in our relationship anymore, so you can drive <laughs> everywhere again. I like that. I'm, I'm like glad that. you put in that week worth of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We didn't even go anywhere. Like, we went to, I think we went to Walmart once. We went to Walmart once to buy me something. <laughs> True story. <laughs> hey, hey. How you been? You got a code in your head, I noticed. Yeah, I jinxed myself. I told you. I told you. The karma karma is a sick and fickle bitch. Yeah, I uh, have a sinus infection and bronchitis. So here's the good news. We know that you're not unbreakable, which means that I'm not Mr. Glass. So that, I mean, that doesn't necessarily directly correlate, no. No? You don't think so? You could be Mr. Glass. <laughs> I Well, I mean, I don't. I haven't broken any bones ever. Maybe I'm unbreakable, and you're now Mr. Glass. Mm. Although, you know what? Uh, I used to hate getting shots. Yeah? Oh, man, they're fabulous now. What do you mean they're fabulous? Oh, you just, you like, you have rationalized the pain for the immediate shot with the fact that you get better immediately? Yeah, I think I think drugs are just better now. Like, going to the dentist is, like, I pray for cavities. Why? Because then I get all shot up and they get to, you know, cat me or whatever saying, it is they, they you, need to do. You're saying you're just looking forward to getting, getting high just some way? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just want to get high in a in a, in a uh, legally sanctioned fashion. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd like to go to the doctor and get... Like, like I've just, had a rough day. Hit me in the face. <laughs> you show up to your chiropractor and you're just like, do you have any laughing gas? Is that a thing that you can administer here? I don't... Uh, I haven't been injured or anything. I don't need... Uh, but you could probably buy your own laughing gas if that's the thing you're down for. No, I don't think you. What? You gotta have a license or something for that. I don't think you do. Then what? Yes, you do. I don't know. We should I'm look into <laughs> it, I guess. <laughs> I don't think you can. I think there's a limit to how much you're supposed to use, though, in a safe fashion. Like, I think it gets dangerous after a little while. Then why would they let you buy it? Well, that's what I'm saying. You have to have, have a license. Liquor, has, them, has it. I guess not. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, other guy, I think that there are two kinds of people in the world. Girl people and boy people? Well, that is also accurate. But that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't the sets that I wanted to talk about. I think that there are I think that there are two kinds of people in the world. There are the kinds of people that if given the choice would choose to face down one horse-sized duck. And then there are the kind of people that would choose to face down 100 duck-sized horses. You count yourself among the former? Yeah, I de yeah, I'm definitely gonna take one horse sized duck over a hundred duck sized horses. It's a complex uh, question. We're we're talking about fight to the death, right? Well, you know, I mean that's the I you'd have to subdue the beast, obviously. Or the beasts, as it may be. Uh but I don't think you'd have to kill them. I mean if you could corral a horse sized duck then I think you'd be okay. The problem is, but why, why wouldn't you want? Could. Why wouldn't you want to eat a horse-sized duck? Well, I don't eat duck. Of That's got to be the tuna of duck, man. <laughs> the tuna of duck. 
<laughs> Are you right? You're spot on. You're right. You you know what? You you've swung me over to your side yet again. Did it sound better without the foam thing? Talk for a minute. Let me see. Hey, does this mic sound better without the foam thing? Because it's like a little fuzzy condom, and you know how like sometimes a condom will will, will increase your performance? Yeah. Here's what that foam thing does for you, though. That foam thing helps mitigate your pops and your... And your... And your... Your juicy like, mouth explosions. Yeah, all your... <laughs> <laughs> All your juicy mouth explosions. I like that you took the X off of it. That's what I appreciate. And we're also joined by our holiday friend. We only see you on Christmas and Easter and uh, and, and America Fuck Yeah Day. Yeah, it's a holiday. Why? What are you? What are you doing in town for the Fourth of July? Um, I am uh, leaving here tomorrow for a fourteen-hour drive. So heading to North Carolina for. Oh, we were a waypoint for you then. Yeah. Well, well, aren't we lucky? And it just so happened to be a holiday, so that's why. That's really why I drive by. It's uh. Great to be back with you guys. I um, appreciate you having me on the show. And uh, we locked your wife and children up in a closet, our mutual friend, so that you could be free this evening. Uh, yeah, they got a they got a bowl there. They're fine. <laughs> it's, you know, there's water. There's a puppy pad. <laughs> they'll, it'll handle itself. I really. do like yeah. you remember to say kids this time. Like you didn't just kill his baby like you usually do. No, I look. I learned my lesson. Uh, Deuce, my youngest, and I had a little heart to heart. He's three now, and so he's he's willing to own up and tell daddy a little something now and again. And he made it clear that my degradation of the youngest children has to stop at this point. So <laughs> I told you. It also doesn't help that whenever it's nap time at your house, I whisper stuff in his ears. Like I'm, I'm trying to make overthrow him your father. Yeah. So he's he's calling you out, dad, not just as a dad, down. but as a, like as a second son too. Like he's he's saying that you're you're treating him differently or something. Yeah. What's interesting though is I now see a future for him, like as a union boss or something. You know, <laughs> I like it. He's nice. a teamster. He's got the build for it too. He does. Yeah. <laughs> you see him with a nickname like you know Chicago Slim or something Smoking like that. A big stogie. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And they're like, well, sir, you can't smoke those in areas. Well, I can smoke it where I want to. It is America. God damn it. He's got one thumb under. Uh under his suspenders suspenders there we go it was the it was the action wasn't it yeah yeah yeah. he was thumbing the air there i was like no i'm just gonna leave him hanging let him figure it out archaic fucking clothing items he's trying to reference nobody wears suspenders anymore when's the last time you saw suspenders january 1st 2005 (laughs) a very specific day i'm assuming that was a wedding yeah yeah, it's been made an the impression. Way. Apparently, there were a couple of like I think that's a silly question to ask. Obviously, people wear suspenders because I see them in the store when I go. So somebody's buying them, or they would make them. Do you see a lot of suspenders in the store? I haven't noticed. A lot <laughs> what store do you see suspenders in? <laughs> Men's warehouse. <laughs> oh, well, see, there you go. I, I don't buy a lot of suits. I mean, look at the, look at the three of us. Other than you, does anyone in this room look like a person that goes to Men's Warehouse very much? You're in a class thing, by apparently yourself. I look like fucking everybody you don't want to be. Because no. a couple episodes, uh, look around the room. Out of out of the rest of us, who looks like, <laughs> who looks like, like a roughneck? roughneck? <laughs> obviously you. Uh, so obviously I'm a suit wearing roughneck. <laughs> well, you're management. We're none. The rest of us have not arisen. We're we're all still serfs, and you've you've eked up into uh, the feudal society. You're a merchant, <laughs> sir. Yeah, no. A money changer. <laughs> a Jew, is that what you're trying to say? A Jew? Is that, is that your nice way to get your anti-Semitic views on the show? You fucking bastard. You're not even Jewish. I like the Jews. I'm not Mel Gibson. So uh, I had a flat tire that I had to change yesterday. Did you man up and do it or call AAA? I, neither one. It, it occurred to me, though. It occurred to me, though. Here's the deal. So rarely does this come up in my life. Rich people change their tires based on mileage, right? They're like, honey, I've been driving on the tires for, I don't know what the tire is good for, 50,000 miles? hundred thousand I don't know what it is. Anyway, whatever it is, you Apparently. drive them that long, you drive them that long, and they say, oh, I'm going to go in and get some new tires on it. Or they, they're they at the service station for a regular checkup, that you know, tune up whatever it is you do to your car maintenance, and the, the guy says, you know, the tread's real low on those tires, why don't you go ahead and put a, a new pair on? And they say, yeah, sure, do that for me. I, on the other hand... Don't try to upsell me. Harris. Change the oil, God damn it. That's all I need. <laughs> Generally, in my life, I drive until the tire explodes. That's safe. And then I'm stranded somewhere in, an, in a, probably an unlevel area where I have to jack it up with these archaic tools, put a donut of a tire in its place, and then drive it to a place where I pay a man a significant amount of money to take it off again, undo all the work that I just did, 
with really good tools so that he does it in like five minutes. I pay him $100. He puts a new tire on. It's a shitty, shitty thing that normal people have Why to do. Rich just, people can go. They don't have to worry with. Like, there's no hurry. If you have a full size spare, it's not like, oh, I got 15 miles to get this thing changed. It depends on how bad your other tires are, doesn't it? My other tires do may be very bad. you rotate them? You don't. You no, don't rotate I don't them. rotate my tires. Point is every this. time he drives. <laughs> yeah, every time I drive, I rotate right down the road. That's the way they're built, right? Yesterday morning, I woke up. I, I put the kids in the car. I got them to school. And I noticed as I'm getting back out to the car, there's, there's metal showing on the tire. But I had the opportunity at that point. I drove it straight to the place where you change the tires, to the service station or whatever. I paid the man. He took the bad tire that's imminently about to blow. He took that tire off, put the new tire on. I never had to touch the fucking tires. I skipped the part in the middle where I'm stranded in a bad place doing something with outdated tools. Fuck yeah, America. That's that's my Independence Day, sir. Independence from changing tires. I hope we cut this entire story. It didn't end very well. All right, then. <laughs> You were telling me the other day, you're the kind of guy that also rides the tire until it explodes, but that's mostly because you like to change the tire. No, I don't like to change the tire. I just, not knowingly. I don't knowingly like to change the tire. But uh, <laughs> closes his eyes the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm doing this shit right. <laughs> no, it's just, I, like, in the, in the situations where I've looked down at my tire and seen metal, like, I haven't, like, obviously, if I've gotten to that point, like, I, I can't do anything about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> see, I never see metal. It's always a surprise to me when I get a flat tire. Every time. You've never preemptively said, hey, I'm my tires are very low. I should get a new tire. I assume that's what people with money did. You have money? No, like whenever I take it in to get serviced, yeah, they'll say, hey, you need to get a tire. It's time to rotate or whatever. I'm just like, all right, whatever. So, whenever, tell- so whenever I get a flat, um, it's, oh, okay. it's never expected. Like nobody like wakes up in the morning and they're like, you know, I bet I got a flat. Well, the one like, guy did, kind of because he saw, did. Yeah, the one guy did. Like, he's I like, did. oh, I got about another eight miles. I'm seeing metal. I need to go get it changed. See, I drive oh, a lot, so I only change them when uh, you know it's raining and <laughs> I just spin out at the stop sign in front of the cop. That's that's generally what. But did he give you tires. a ticket for it? No, he laughed. Don't change those tires. <laughs> <laughs> those tires got you out of a ticket. Yeah, those are good tires. Yeah, those are humorous tires. I might I might trade my tires for those. Something I do want to talk about, since we do have the voice of our mutual friend in the studio with us. Uh, we don't that, just have this, his, that, his voice. It's not his a dis- body. Yeah, he's all, <laughs> all of him is he's here. He's not calling in. Yeah, so here's the deal. Last episode, we got a listener email from our mutual friend that berated me pretty handily. <laughs> I'm not going to deny didn't deserve it. Like, I, yeah, maybe. But we have since then talked face to face, and I think I've got him turned around on the whole tar balls things. I, I think I've got him seeing the right way now. I would just like to point out that there was an ultimatum and a declaration made last week that we were done talking about masturbation, Dutch rudders, tar balls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You took it back to the no, gutter, sir. Masturbation, I'm just saying. masturbation, no masturbation and Dutch rudders and stuff, but tar balls that has. Ah, uh, you haven't yet. closed the door on tar balls yet. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, no. I see. If we can take time to prove how wrong I am on stuff, whenever it comes back to light, that there's a retraction on it. Damn it, I want it heard. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. You've got a witness here in, in, in the uh, studio. Our mutual friend, you're brought over to the dark side on this. You think that, that tar balling is a thing that may indeed go on in our society? I could see how it could happen. You know, with a certain kind of tar, you know, like obviously hot roof and tar is totally out the window. Pine tar. That's not, that's not possible. Pine tar, I think, I think it could happen. Um, I think that there would be some pretty serious ramifications from the tar baller. I mean, tar, tar and feathering has been a real thing yeah. forever. Which actually, I, I actually am such a dork. I looked this up the other day after the whole tar balls thing. And that's what they used to see is they use pine tar because that's how they would seal their wooden cabins and stuff. Like really? That's how they would waterproof them. So that's what, when you hear about tar and feather, they're actually talking about pine tar. Huh. Or some kind of some other kind of tar similar to that, which is liquid at room temperature. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be boiling hot necessarily. They could have it has been hot, they've been using it and they bring it back in, smack it on your balls. Yeah. yeah. I mean I could I could see how it could happen. And you know, after we talked about it for me, I no longer doubt that this is ever happened to you. At first I thought you were just making that up. Yeah, see, I mean, there we go. I'm gonna need to see photos truthfully before I believe it. I You're don't think need it to happened. See some actual tar balls to believe it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think we could make that happen. <laughs> Got the pine tar in the car. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. I had one more question. Dude, this is a one-question show, man. The phenomenon of porn in the woods as a child. Now you're a child of the '80s, like me. You're a couple of years younger than us. Yeah, yeah. Still the '80s, but still around that time. Yeah. I, 
This is something that I remember from being a kid, and they, the two of them both, they thought it was odd that they both had this same story, but then they asked their audience to write in. They were like, do you guys, do, is this, does this happen everywhere? Scott kind of thought that this is all over. Matt Mira, not so much. When you were a kid, did you ever find a porn magazine in the woods? Yeah, In a stump or something? Yeah. You did? <laughs> yeah. But it was, all, but it was behind, um, it was behind a school. Yes, I mean that's what yeah. they said. They, they were talking about very specifically, like outside of their middle school or something. There was a place the kids knew at recess. You could go over here, and there was like two playboys in the in the stump or something. Yeah. You know, I, that guy. Do you have a similar experience? No, I never found any porn in the woods ever. And mine, mine <laughs> <laughs> like I'm so upset about it. Like, very mad. I like, missed maybe out I'm... on a major part of childhood. Like, <laughs> there's porn in the woods somewhere. <laughs> I can almost guarantee you, if you'd spent much time in the woods surrounding your house, there was some porn in them. It's my understanding that in the late 80s and the early 90s, there was pretty much porn in every stock of woods. Every it's any, left, Dude, it's left there by the pornicorn. <laughs> the Just, pornicorn? It's a magical creature that shits porn mags. Nice, <laughs> nice. I, I, Instead of a horn, it's a huge goddamn dildo coming out of its head. <laughs> it's a big floppy cock. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, if someone draws me a picture of the pornicorn and sends it into two guys one pod at me dot com, you will get a t shirt. <laughs> we don't have a t shirt. We will make a t shirt and send it to you if you send me a picture of the pornicorn. I'm just telling you right now. I think that throughout the evolution of the pornicorn, it went from being very or like really a bushy animal, and now it's completely clean shaven. <laughs> It's like bald and <laughs> too pink, almost too pink with a big almost cock. too pink. <laughs> You're like, oh, uh, see, I think they come in different angry. colors, man. I think, <laughs> I think pornicorns are multicolored, and, uh, and depending on the porn mag left behind, tells you the color of the pornicorn. <laughs> if it's an ebony mag, that's a black unicorn. That's a black <laughs> pornicorn. It's a strong Nubian pornicorn, <laughs> and their and their and their and their pornicorns are are larger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we do we want to discuss the Asian pornicorn? <laughs> They're rare. It's hard to ever tell who they are because they always got goddamn masks on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! So they're like like leather pornicorns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the S and M pornicorns. <laughs> Uh, they, 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 they're real skinny. They can't eat because they're, they're they got that fucking ball gag in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing this gaunt fucking like. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> I'm having like, a hard time picturing it. To be honest with you, you, you guys. Ah, you guys right. have seen the um. Like you it's, guys it's got a the, fucking it's got a fucking ball yes. gag in its mouth. Its horn at the end of it has a little whip swinging around. Like a little <laughs> I was gonna say its tassel, tail is the yeah. cat of nine tails. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then the fucking uh, its ribs are like buckled slats. <laughs> you, uh, you guys have seen the uh, you guys have seen images from the new My Little Ponies cartoon, right? My Little Ponies Friendship is Magic or whatever is the name of this thing. No, no, we don't have kids, man. I, well, but I'm saying you've seen t- like television and you've been in Walmart. It's apparently no, a pretty dude, big deal. I, I record all of my TV and watch no commercials. Ah, uh, fair enough. All right. Well, anyway, they've re- they've redone My Little Ponies, it, and it, like in the last, I don't know, five or six years or something. And apparently, it's a phenomenon, not just among kids, but there's a lot of adults that like it too because they remember Nostalgia. the series. Yeah, girls and guys though. There's a whole deal, and so like. Do you, like, there's a whole fan base. They go to conventions of the whole nine yards. They draw celebrities as ponies and everything. I've, I know far too much about this phenomenon. Anyway, my point is, the whole time you guys have been talking about the pornicorn, I'm seeing varying versions of, <laughs> of those my of that ponies. style My Little Ponies cartoon <laughs> drawn with the new accessories That's for the pornicorn. Worse. Yeah, That's it's a worse, worse image. It's way Dude, worse. We should, we, should, we should market that because they have like those little fucking teddy bears. Yeah. That all like dresses like naughty nurses or fucking in a straight jacket with a Hannibal Lecter mask on. Are you or some are, shit. are you suggesting that the pornicorn should be the new mascot for Two Guys One Pod? Ooh, it is magical <laughs> and brings happiness to all. The pornicorn. And if porn doesn't make you happy, that's a you problem. The legend of the pornicorn, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, th- I th- that's the name of this episode. There we go. The legend of the, the pornicorn. Legend of the pornicorn. In, in which we all find a happy stash. <laughs> Oddly enough, the pornicorn actually comes from fucking North Korea, to be honest with you. Well, there's a big slab right over there yeah, that says right there, unicorn lair. 
Yeah, mistranslation. Pornicorn layer is really yeah. that's the the it's the it's the old it's the oldie uh, Korean O L D E <laughs> Korean. Old the, the old Korean. The, yeah, in the old Korean, <laughs> the old Korean, Korean. It was pornicorn. <laughs> Sounds very similar to the modern unicorn, but uh, it was a mistranslation, misunderstanding down through the historical records. Very, very sad. Other guy, one of the things that I think has got the most potential uh, that we've done so far is the idea of if you could. Yeah, I like those. Let our minds roam and expand, give ourselves the powers of gods, and uh, play a little what if. Today, uh, one I'm pretty proud of. If you could live sitcom style with any movie star, who would it be? I'm talking about, it's George Clooney, for example. You and George Clooney move into a nice middle-class apartment. George Clooney doesn't stop being a famous movie star. You don't stop being who you are. Your job's the same. Everything else about your life is the same. You just have to split bills and personal space with this famous person. Like George Clooney gets caught soliciting a hooker and his... His punishment is house arrest with you. Pretty is essentially what's happening. Yes, yes. I know we haven't sketched out the background, and perhaps the background would be different. It's one of those things where, like, the universe would have have to self correct. So, for George Clooney, maybe the only way to get him into your house is yes, it's house arrest with a hooker. hooker. Sorry, George, you don't get sex, and you have to live with this guy. You no, know, nobody said anything about cutting out sex for him. He could have I'm ladies about over. About the hooker, he got busted. Like oh well, yes, cop. yes. Okay, good point. Yes. So, it's not the character. You're not going to be living with a the character they played. You're going to be living with the movie star themselves. Could be a girl, of course. If you're still you and I'm still me, my, my, like my wife would live with me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're right. You're right. And in your case, it's sorry, going to be sorry, you sorry, and so, Mrs. So other so guy. Now you're <laughs> you're officially off the list. There is still room for you, perhaps at. <laughs> At Casa de Uno Hombre. <laughs> Casa de Uno Hombre. So what are your thoughts? You got some questions on today's, if you could? My wife still live like we're still married. Yes. Never never mind the ridiculousness of why are they living in a middle of nowhere town or why does my job suddenly move to L.A. or New York. But yes, you for whatever the... My two dads reasoning is to get the two of you guys living in a place together, or in your case, you well, and I'll tell you who it's not Mrs. Be. Other Guy. Okay. And that's Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> I think on your part, that's the, unless you plan on fucking Chris Hemsworth, not, I think that's a yeah. good idea for you to not move in with Thor. I like being married, Chris Hemsworth. Get the fuck out. Yes. Yeah. No, I just, Chris Hemsworth, please. Could you could you just not do any sit ups today, Chris? Please, naked at least. Yeah, so I'm cutting out I'm cutting out all All hot guys. That's your first criteria? Yeah, it's not gonna be an attractive guy. It's not gonna be an attractive girl. I think that's trouble. In paradise. Um but it could be it could be somebody who's attractive and married. So a couple? Yeah, a couple could move in, yeah. I think that would be I think that'd be fun. All right. What's a famous couple that you would consider moving, sharing, sharing like a almost like a European style, where you know like families live together. You know, grandma and grandpa and yeah. mom and dad and and the kids and, and all uncle, live in the house yeah, yeah. together. Brad and Angie. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I do like Brad Pitt. I meet <laughs> Brad Pitt. We'd eat you out of house and home. Yeah, but with those lips, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> like I'm, I'm okay with that, Brad. All right, but we fuck Here's them because of the kids. Oh, okay. So let's assume we can send all the kids to boarding school. You just get Brad and Angie. Yeah, no, here's the... I would, Consideration? You'd accept their application and have a meeting with them, right? I think I'm going to go with Betty White. I think that's a very topical, popular pick. But Betty White, a couple of reasons. You just wondered because she wouldn't live that long. Well, that I'm pretty sure within the, the short few years that she has left, I could worm my way into her will. <laughs> you know she's the Highlander, though. Right, that's the other reason. Oh. Like... I might cut off Betty White's head if I get to be a Highlander. Just just to see if you could absorb her strength and live forever with, yeah, like the, after every, with think, the full power of the of the Golden Girls. After each one of the Golden Girls died, like she got a bump in her career. True story. And one of the Golden Girls died, and then bam, she's in Lake Placid, and kind of has this edgy role and says things you wouldn't expect Betty White to say. It's fun watching Betty White say cocksucker. Yeah, that's. And then she kind of goes away after that, like nobody. Duh. Another Golden Girl died, and she gets hot in Cleveland. The Snickers commercial. Another Golden Girl died, and she gets the, the Snickers commercial. That Snickers commercial killed, man. 
if you're a pagoda, like like how bad Wait do you have to? What's his name again? Apparently, I'm saying it wrong. I'm saying, say it again. Well, what's his name? I don't know. What do you think his name is? I'm not. I'm not fencing with you, homie. <laughs> it's Abe Vagoda. Oh, it's a V. <laughs> you thought his name was Abe Pagoda or Bugoda? <laughs> you you know what a pagoda? Vagoda? Yeah, Abe Vagoda. But huh. you know what a pagoda is, right? Yeah, it's like a like it's the like building. A, yeah. Pagoda. It's like a. Is it a Hawaiian thing? Let's see. Abe Vagoda. V I G O D A. Okay. Well, how shitty do you have to? How shitty do you have to feel if you're if you're Abe? V V V Vagoda. <laughs> no, that's horrible. <laughs> um. From the Snickers commercial. Why would you feel bad about if you were Abe Vagoda? He was in the Snickers commercial. No bump. Oh, Abe Vigoda's been living on being Abe Vigoda for 45 years, though. Yeah, what happened to He didn't get a show after this Nicholas commercial. Was he on Saturday Night Live? Hell no, because he's not a Highlander. Abe Vigoda's too classy to whore himself on NBC. Really? No, he's not. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not. He showed up at some of those he's roasts. He's probably wearing a diaper shitting himself right now, and you're saying he's got too much class to, <laughs> you're terrible. to go on Saturday Night Live. A pagoda is the general term in the English language for a tiered tower with multiple eaves common in Nepal, India, China, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Burma, and other parts of Asia. A Vagoda is an American movie and television actor who appeared in such movies as The Godfather and Good Burger. Jesus Christ, that's the only place in the world that, that you'll ever read the, the film titles The Godfather and Good Burger in the same sentence. He's this is his this is in his Wikipedia uh, Wikipedia page. Abe Vigoda, uh, born February twenty fourth, nineteen twenty one, is an American movie and television actor who appeared in such movies as The Godfather and Good Burger. Jesus Christ, those are the two movies. That's The Godfather, Good Burger. Really, Abe Vigoda is known for Good Burger. I'd rather it say he's known for appearing in The and Godfather the commercial. and the Snickers commercial. Yes, that would be that would be better to the to the honor of Abe Vigoda than than. Good burger. Oh, so you want to move in with Betty White? Yeah, Betty. I mean, I feel like I feel like if Betty White lived with me, I could look forward to waking up every morning to the smell of cinnamon rolls. Do you think Betty White smells like cinnamon rolls? No, like scratch but I think and she bakes like a grandmother. Whenever I go to my grandmother's house, she always has me cinnamon rolls. Yeah, I don't think Betty White. Bakes. Like she gets up at five o'clock, makes the cinnamon rolls. I sleep till ten. Right. I wake up. There's cinnamon rolls for me. Yeah, but your grandmother has not made her living. As a sassy comedian, I don't. I don't think Betty White bakes is what I'm saying. Yeah, she would. It's maybe Betty White bakes, but she doesn't bake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she does. She will at my house. <laughs> she'll earn her keep, or yeah. she'll get the fuck out. No, no, no. She'll she'll earn my keep, or it's misery on that bitch. You gonna break her Bet- kneecaps like Betty Kathy White Hayes? has a broken hip? She fell. <laughs> Poor Betty. I didn't. He pushed me. You're old, Betty White. <laughs> she's senile. Betty doesn't know what she's saying. Now go bake me a cake. Have you watched her show, Off the Rockers? No. I literally can't believe that they've put on Punked, but with senior citizens. That's the way to do it. Like, I'm excited to be 90. I can't wait. I'm just, just going to steal fall apart. stuff. <laughs> and tell people, you know, oh, I, didn't, I don't know. What are you talking about? No, I'll, yeah, I stole it. I'm 90. You're going to jail, and then I would run that shit. You're going to start wearing Depends at like 54, too, aren't you? You're I'm, like, I'm what? I'm old. Right now. <laughs> Out of pure laziness. Think how much time I save in my day. So what what movie star do I want to move in with? I don't I don't want to move in with an old person. Betty White, funny though she may be, like there's going to be dentures and... I want to move in with Ricky Gervais. Creams and... And then maybe he'll make a show about me. I don't want to move in with anyone that I know for a fact is smarter than I am. And I know for a fact Ricky Gervais is smarter than I am. I like being the smartest person in the room. <laughs> I'm just not going to talk anymore. <laughs> um, who the fuck? I asked this question and I don't know. I do agree with you that it would be if I'm going to continue my life and they're going to continue their life. So it's not like it's not like I'm getting <laughs> like a new girlfriend. So I can't just move in a hot chick. Uh, well, you could. I mean, I could, but I'd have to explain it, and I can't automatically expect sex just because she's moving in. I'd have to explain it to the to to my current girlfriend, and would also not have any real hope of getting sex with the family. So it's, it's Zoe Deschanel, for instance. That's awesome. And now I've got the quirky, awesome roommate. But that I doesn't mean that bitch. I get to... You think so? Yeah. No, I bet she's awesome. I bet no. she's very funny. I Okay, so not a hot girl, not somebody with kids. 
We need a bachelor, I guess. That suits my lifestyle. Matthew McConaughey. Fuck yes. There you go. Matthew McConaughey is the guy. And first of all, he's a good southern boy. Yeah, get to party. Occasionally that dude's going to get naked and play the bongos while he's stoned out of his gourd. But you know, I, I just need to know when I hear the bongos. Just call me bongos. Yeah, do you just, you know, oh, fuck you. <laughs> no, that's the night that maybe I stay at the girlfriend's place. You know, that's that's the way that that works. Matthew McConaughey. I think that dude would be a bitchin' roommate. You know he's always got good munchies, first off. He's got good But you don't need him music. anyway, so who cares? Well, but I mean, hey, all stoners like junk food. Surely I can get him. To, I can talk him into some zebra cakes or some or some Swiss cake rolls or something. Like as he's sleeping, like you're creepily over him, whispering in his ear, zebra cakes, zebra, zebra cakes. cakes. Thing I like about zebra cakes is they get older, they taste just as good. No, no that was bad. No. Maybe maybe if it was a Twinkie. Thing I like about Last Twinkies forever. is I get older, they stay the same flavor. No, no, you're fuck. fucking this up. I'm missing it. Fucking hit one for me then. See, I don't care if the guy's smarter than me. I just don't want him to be better looking than me. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. I know that there are many better looking people than me. Most of my life, I have not, like if there's four people in the room, I've probably been the third or fourth best looking person in the room most of my life. That's not the case anymore. I'm not a bad looking dude anymore. But all of this time, I was, I still had a good life, and it was because I developed personality and I was funny and thought on my feet. So I, I need that to not be taken away from me. I don't mind if you look better than me. I don't, I don't think you can be a fat dude and say you think on your feet. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't get on your feet? Bullshit. Uh, I, I disagree. And this is a perfect example of why you have not been fat long enough. Fat people don't sit down, sir. You know why? Because fat people don't look good sitting down. We can feel pretty comfortable standing up in a crowd because we know how to stand and hide most of our flub and rolls. You sit down and it's all exposed. You see exactly how big the man boobs are, the moobs, if you will. You see exactly how big the fucking fat rolls are in the stomach. No. Fat guys stand up. Fat guys definitely stand up. What the fuck did we get onto this for? I don't know. I don't even remember where we're at. I don't know. We were talking about roommates. It's so dark out here. <laughs> I don't know where I'm at. Got lost in the ether. <sighs> Fuck. So what? Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, Matthew McConaughey is who right. I'm going to go with. I he's a good looking dude, which means he's probably got good looking chick friends. He's real laid back. He's down to earth. Uh, he's also a traveler. He likes you know like the outdoors and stuff. So like he'd be gone a good bit. He also has a snake pit on his ranch. So really, yeah. Fuck Matthew McConaughey. Then never mind. No snakes at my place. You know what? Betty White's not looking so bad now. I'm telling you. <laughs> I think I think it's a good one. So I was really disappointed uh to find out that you don't you really don't watch the Olympics. You don't care. I don't give a shit. I really don't. I mean, I no look. I'm glad that the Americans do well. I'm very proud of my country. I'm proud of my country though because we have freedoms and we have a booming economy. Even, yeah, when it's kind of shitty now. But it's better than most of the world, for God's sakes. Uh, most of our people are free to live their lives and do what they want to, and we have lots of opportunity here, and very few people starve in comparison to other parts of the world. I'm proud of us for all of that. I don't give a shit how fast we run compared to the Nigerians. Here's the thing. I, I love the Olympics. I mean, I sent you... I sent you a message that pretty much listed every other large sporting event, and the and Olympics are above it. You are a close. rabid sports fan. You're a much bigger sports fan than I am. I, now, you don't you you love baseball. Love baseball. You don't love any of the other sports, perhaps as much as I do. But sports in general, you are an ESPN aholic. You 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 mainline highlights and box scores, and you really enjoy all of that. But all of it pales in comparison, falls away. In the grandeur that is the Olympics, and in the particular, summer Olympics. the Summer Olympics. You, yes, the you Summer fuck Olympics. the Winter Olympics? Uh, you, like, you like skating, don't you? Uh, I, I do like speed skating. Apollo Ono, I, I'd like to hang out with that dude. Just didn't, I didn't grow up around snow. I've never been skiing. It's something I have never just done. just no frame of reference. I've been swimming. Yeah. I've I fenced for a while. You know a guy who has a kayak. Yeah. I, uh, I've ran. Right. I've thrown a discus. Yeah. I've wrestled. There's a lot of things in, in there that, that I'm familiar with and I can get behind. How can you not love something that 
that celebrates competitiveness, sportsmanship on such a large dude it's the it's the fucking world out there and the world's watching yeah we don't get to see it in real time like i got my uh i'm i'm a few years older than my wife and uh we've been watching it together right and i've i've been watching the olympics since a, a, as as long as i can remember i've been watching the olympics like in in 96 man I was thinking 96 has got to be the first time. I mean, a little bit in 92 with the Dream Team, I was into it. 96, because it was in Atlanta, which means it was like everything happened. We saw it all live, yeah. all the big events we saw live. I didn't. I had never been to Atlanta at that point, but it felt like a place that I knew. You know, it was in the South, for God's sake. So, you know, it, that, that made sense to me. Um, so that had a special thing. Other than that, I haven't really cared. You're so, you're, you're, that's completely un-American. I, I don't, I disagree. I hear, it's not that I'm anti-Olympics. I'm all for you getting excited about it. I like anything that gives any other human being joy that doesn't cost another human being pain. You know what I mean? Oh, oh no, hurt. the Olympics, bro. The Olympics causes pain. Yeah. I got a couple of things to talk about. It's only three winners. There's a whole uh, lot of about losers. The, about the pain. No, there's, dude, if you, oh my God, just you, take the sports out of it, right? Take the competition out of it. And NBC does. <laughs> yeah, to, but to to have to know someone has spent well over the majority of their life, years and years and years, they, they've given up. They they've given up donuts. They've given like they've given up so much. They've given up relationships. They've y- y- all kinds of things that they have given up and put off the side to train and focus on this one thing. Not to be good at it, but to be the best at it. To to excel to the edge of human. That's a that's a thing of beauty. We've talked about it. If you if somebody's weaving a basket and they're a fucking master basket weaver, I want to see it. Yeah, these dudes have been training for years. They've given up things. They've given up their families in some cases. I'm gonna cry thinking about this. <laughs> you are. You're getting a little misty. They're, they're giving up like all this stuff for this one for this one moment for this one this one thing this one ideal that they've put on a pedestal and to see it when these little fucks don't get it. <laughs> other than the NFL preseason. You will never see a soul crushed. Like, oh. you will see a soul crushed during the Olympics. I've forgotten about your love for the preseason because, those, like, their livelihoods are on the line. Yeah. It's literally yes. whether or not they get to feed their kids this week or have to go back to work at Burger King in yes. some cases. Yeah. Yeah. In this case, some of these cats never learned another trade and won't because and, and now won't. their bodies are exactly. malformed in some fashion. That's, that's, that's it. To see. To see that it, it it's a thing to watch, man. That's drama. So a couple of notes that I have written down that that I found interesting, and most of these are going to come from the opening ceremonies. Okay, I know you didn't watch it. I I I watched it through the lens of Twitter, as I did the gymnastics last that night. That was actually. something else that blew my mind. You will watch stuff that's unwatchable because it is a quote unquote event. I have on the Twitter sphere. I have hung out. There's like, nothing bigger than the Olympics, bro. I just nothing. I a part of the thing is they've. I'm a cable cutter now, and they've made me jump through so many GD hoops. It's so damn hard to watch the Olympics, to watch any of it. It's not if it's you not, don't subscribe to cable. It's effectively it's, impossible. I'm not on the internet very often. I don't have a Facebook, so all these people are complaining about the delays. I don't know the results until I watch it during prime time. I don't. That's what, my, my DVR is working overtime. Since the opening ceremonies, I'm I'm not shitting you. I've probably watched 18 to 20 hours of the Olympics. The yeah. opening ceremonies was only like two days ago. I mean, we're you no. Know, when did they open? Monday. Yeah. Yeah. So two days ago. It's Wednesday when we're recording this. For God's sakes, man. It's on TV all day. Uh, here's what's amazing. The first time you're you see these athletes is when they. They parade in, and it's each country, and they do it alphabetical order in the ridiculous outfit. And they, oh, some of them are. Um, it's like the Hunger Games. Hey, the, the here's the thing, man. Uh, the United States outfits were pimp. They were designed by Ralph Lauren and manufactured in China. I think that of says course. who we are. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> we're too lazy to make our own clothes. Here you go, China. Designed in Cupertino, <laughs> manufactured in China. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a huge honor. In case you didn't know, to carry your flag during that ceremony. I did know that. Yeah. It's like the it's like it's an honor to carry the torch. It's a big deal. They choose yeah. only a few people. Yeah, it's a big deal. So they go in and then it shows the person's name and it tells what support they're competing in. All right. So for example, Italy comes up. Do you want to guess what their flag holder was was competing in? 
uh, uh, what's the you're doing rowing yeah not rowing but what's the with the with the gondolas is there a thing for gondolas no but fencing Poling? right fencing that's something you can associate sure. with Italy yeah, yeah yeah right that's not a stretch Inigo Montoya yeah there you go and then Ireland for instance heavy drinking no boxing boxing exactly yeah. boxing like oh Ireland boxing I get it here's where I think it goes awry for some countries and they maybe they're geniuses maybe they're not Kuwait um surfing shooting <laughs> Cool, I'm not fucking kidding you. Like all the Wait. middle all the Middle Eastern countries. I'm not I'm not, the I'm country, not lying. the country who couldn't defend itself? Yeah, but all but all the Middle Eastern countries were just about all of them were, sh- were shooting. The guy who cared wasn't weird. shooting. That's weird. Because what else well, I mean, what have they grown up doing? That's a survival tactic to them. They've got to be good at it. I just I just found that amazing, which may, then made me think because it also shows the population of that country and how many Olympians they have. I'm going to use that to pick where I want to retire. Yeah, right? You're going to you're going to be an expat when you retire? Yeah, like I'm going to I'm going to that's you're how I'm going to do it. I'm going to see the countries and flee here's the, flee the states. Yeah, and here's how I'm going to here's how I'm going to decide which country I'm going to go to. Whichever country has the best ratio versus population and Olympians is where I want to go because to have a high ratio of Olympians, that country's got to be pretty good to live in, so those people have leisure time to compete in these events. Uh, that's a very, that's actually probably a great way to deduce like the uh, standard of living in a country. Yeah, I've so, never thought about it, but yeah. That's what I thought. That, this is what I think about as I'm watching the opening ceremony. So, for example. Uh, can I guess? So, I mean, like Australia and Great Britain, obviously, are going to be very high. The U.S., very, very well, uh, but the U.S. has a huge population too. I'm talking yeah. about countries with smaller populations. I, I'm assuming yeah, have- Australia, U.S., uh, Australia and U.K. very, very high. Yes, uh, it'd be other European countries. Germany is going to be very high. Yep. Uh, you're looking at all of like the Norways, uh, the, the the although maybe more in the Winter Olympics than in the Summer Olympics. I yeah, don't know. But outside of the U.S., outside so, of so the U.K. population here is, and, yeah. and I didn't go through all of them. I just right. jotted a couple of them down. Uh, but Palau is a it's an island country. Palau, okay. Yeah. Their population is twenty one thousand. All right. Wow. Yeah. Small, right? Twenty one thousand people. Yes. Like this, the, this town's bigger than that. Yes. That's, that's a whole. That's of, a sovereign that's nation. A country. That is a country. You and me, and some buddies everything. could go over there and take they just that take nation. it over. <laughs> they're, they're all at the Olympics right now. <laughs> Other guy. <laughs> all their best we athletes are gone. Fucking country. That's what are we doing it's here? Genius. Genius. <laughs> Their flag's gone too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no flag, no country. I think the rules are clear. So, Palau, twenty one thousand. Right. Our future home people. Yes, our Palau, future home. Twenty one thousand people. They, dude, they had four Olympians. Olympians. Boy, that ratio has got to be off the charts. It's, it's higher than America's, I'm sure. So, so, for example, the Philippines, right? Okay. A hundred and four million is their population. Uh, significantly larger than Palau. Yes. <laughs> How many Olympians would you expect the Philippines to have? Based on Palau's ratio, yes. I'm going to assume they had 40,000 Olympians. One. <laughs> Guess who's not moving to the Philippines? Yeah. <laughs> this guy's not Neither going to the these Philippines. Guys. Neither of these guys are moving to the it Philippines. Is, it is obviously difficult. You are spending your entire time <laughs> trying to survive. There's a lot of people over there worried about the light bill. <laughs> the island of Palau provides for you. <laughs> So that's something that I found interesting. I thought I thought that was an interesting way to, to view the world. It's it's that's pretty fantastic. <laughs> uh, USA, by the way, had five hundred and twenty eight athletes. Wow! And this is the first time there have been more female athletes than male athletes uh, from the U.S. or from period the, from the U.S. Okay. Uh, one of the stats I saw online I thought was very interesting, and and you know I'm proud about this because I'm an equality kind of guy. Uh, this is the first time in Olympian history or Olympic history that every competing nation has both male and female athletes. That's cool. That's I mean that just go and how can you not how can you not like it and feel great as an American and and not feel that we as a country through the venue of the Olympics has has been able to to display that. Well, uh, there's you and I are both children of the '80s. Here's part of my problem with the Olympics. Fuck the Russians. Y- yes, but not just fuck the Russians. In the 80s, in particular, there was this idea of our way was the right way, the only right way. And we didn't have to be assholes about it because eventually, if we just kept living it, everybody would see it. And I think that's kind of the idea that you're going for. And and yes, it, there is something to be said about 
look what happens in a free society. People can explore all sorts of avenues and and humanity can achieve their utmost. Look at our Olympic athletes. But at the same time, I, I, as, as patriotic as I am, and I love my fucking country, but I, there's a little too much jingoism in there for me. Just I can't, I can't, I can't get into it that much. I'm not going to chant USA. Really? Nah. This country wouldn't be what it is if you didn't have those people chanting USA from way back. We, we wouldn't have had a goddamn revolution if everybody thought like you. You're what's wrong with a nation. I don't, hey. You, I'm a self-starter here, man. You, you and I, we're building a thing. We were just talking today about this what? is this is the American dream. This is my yeah. this is my example of 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 rah 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 USA. I'll chant USA on this podcast. Put a, USA, dude, dude. Put on USA. as much, USA. dude. Put on as much lipstick as you want. You're still a commie fascist killjoy. I am not a commie fascist killjoy. That's rude. Yeah, because you're American, you also have to be a freeloader. You're a freeloading commie a fascist freeloading. killjoy. <laughs> commie fascist killjoy. Yeah, because I'm sucking off the <laughs> the American teat without without pulling my own weight, huh? <laughs> uh. Okay, so All here right. we go. Back onto it. Yes, England hosts this this Olympics. Yes, uh, London. Uh, I would like to institute a new rule: if your country only wins one gold medal in the previous Olympics, you cannot host. Like you lose, like you, you lose. You, uh, it doesn't matter what the bid was. The, yes. Who was second place? Yeah, they got, get to host the Olympics. I mean, I mean, think about it. this. Is a huge economic impact for these guys. If if deal. the medal count came into play here, dude, we would see some crazy shit at the Olympics. But we, I mean, it's we'd the see same. a two minute mile, man. Do you think really? If you if we if it was like make it take it if you won the olympics you got to host the next year you're saying there'd be an arms race again for athletes yes. it would be amazing <laughs> i'm all for it you want to see oh there'd be so many the russians see, break out the super soldiers again oh yeah like steroids would be fucking rampant it'd be awesome uh something else that i also liked um is is watching i've watched a lot of them so i've seen a lot of names yeah i, I wrote down two of my favorite names okay one plays for the u.s uh indoor volleyball team all right male female female okay her name is destiny hooker <laughs> no joke h-o-o-k-e-r destiny hooker she's one of the illegitimate daughters of tj though from the- <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, man. sliding across hoods and whatnot like but, but here's the thing is like if your last name's hooker <laughs> you might as well go ahead yeah. and name yourself Embrace Destiny. it. Embrace Ginger, it. Her, yeah, her sugar. parents did. Yeah. <laughs> Precious. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> Cheap. <laughs> Hell of a... Hello. Hello, Pastor <laughs> Robbins. This is my daughter, Cheap Hooker. <laughs> that's, I've brought her for christening. <laughs> that's... That's crazy. <laughs> uh, Congregation uh, would like to welcome... Cheap hooker into our midst. <laughs> the uh, the other name uh, is a Chinese swimmer. All right, male. I see. It's not fair making fun of the uh, the Chinese though. Oh, There's but it's a is, language barrier. This this makes it. This makes me. Um, it just makes me smile. They name restaurants like you know F U and things like that. It's it's, but they just don't know. We don't know. It'll bring right. a smile to your face. All right. What's the name? Partay Wan. <laughs> no joke. It's it's Park P A R K right T A E H W A N. It is pronounced Partewan. <laughs> Table of which, fun Partewan, <laughs> which is our party on, which is what you would expect if you're putting on a Chinese accent. That's how you would say party on or party one. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. That's Partewan Garth. Uh, is he a good? Is he? A, is he a good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. He's good. He's he's pretty good, man. I saw Phelps got his 19th last night. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so he that's the record, yeah. right? Individual He's the record. most decorated, and 15 of them are gold, so that's a plus. Yeah. Uh, something that's a big ticket at the Olympics is gymnastics. Right. Right? Like there's, It's one of the highest rated always. Uh, yeah. It's especially big in the U.S. Yeah, but I, uh, my wife wasn't, wasn't really into the Olympics back in the day, and so... She, she didn't know who Carrie Strug was. She didn't know the the situation on the on the bum ankle. She she goes to it. She's got to nail this right vault for the Americans to win the the all around. And this this is the one with like the 
the Eastern European coach. You can do Bella, it. Right? Bella, Bella Caroli, his wife, Marta Caroli, is is the uh, coach now. Okay. Uh, and Bella Caroli is also the one from Romania who uh, you, Bella Lugosi. I what, are they all named Bella, Bella Caroli? It's that's the dude's name. Anyway, he coached. Oh, Nadia, uh, the, the girl who got the first perfect score for the Romanian team. Okay, he was her coach too. Defected. I guess not defected, moved. He just moved. Yeah, he just moved. States. You know why? Because we got nice shit here. <laughs> yeah. He moved and started coaching the States, and we, we became powerhouse. And in 96, won the all-around gold and the whole thing. with it, she, she stuck it, man. And as soon as she landed, you know, she looked to the crowd, looked to the judges, and then just Fell apart. Because her fucking ankle was broken, right? Yeah, exploded. Yeah. And I got teary-eyed explaining just that. Just telling her Just telling ex- – I did. I got teary-eyed. You're talking to a dude who cried at Batman, so it's, I shouldn't make I didn't fun cry, of you. I didn't cry at Batman. Batman doesn't matter. In the grand scheme of things, Batman Here, expires. Batman, Pierce Jugg's ankle matters. Yeah, Batman inspires no ones but Looney Ticks and, and geeks. This event. Batman lives in the heart of every man. So. Whatever. Whatever. But that's, like, I got, I got Weepy explaining it to her. Yeah. So we're watching the girls the other night. Yes. And these these chicks fucking just smoke everybody, right? They they yeah, rip like every dominate. other country apart, dominated, not even close. But the qualifying to get up there, dude, Jordan Weber, Jordan Weber, maybe. Uh, she she's the world champion, man. She's the world champion. She proved it at that the world. She's she's the best all around gymnast in the in the world, man. Yes. She's already won this title. All right. But they have to qualify to compete for the all around. Okay. Turns out. You can only take two Olympians from any any one country to compete for the all around. Okay. This girl has has lived, breathed, slept, dreamed of this moment. The all around gold. That's her goal. Has been since she was two. They go they go through it. All the Americans perform great. Right. She posts the fourth best qualifying score. Too bad. Two of her teammates posted higher scores. She was the fourth best qualifier and can't even compete for it. And when that score goes up and she realizes that, and you see her, you see that realization take her, man. And that's, that's a moment that is out there for the world to see. Imagine your most heartbreaking moment being televised to billions. Like the moment on which your universe turns. The moment yes. at which you, you stand at the crossroads of of success, ultimate success, and final completion of your life's journey, yeah. or ultimate failure, and and the vanquishment of that that dream, and the world sees it, and everybody got to see it, except for one guy. And you're a 17 year old girl, man. Oh Christ! And and we saw it. We dude, you see her. I mean, there's nothing more heart wrenching to see than that. And here's what these cocksuckers do on TV, dude. It it pissed me off. It gave me a case of the red ass. I couldn't believe I'm 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 getting upset and gonna cry because of this. The girl who did make it, they interview they interview her and oh how does it feel? You made you made the all around with Jordan behind her like five feet openly weeping. Uh, they had her in the shot? Yes. During the whole goddamn interview. Now on the flip side though, somebody on the fucking team has to be aware of where the camera is though olympians in this day and age uh, d- d- one of the coaches or something if not one of her teammates somebody's got to get her out of that shot no she tried to walk she as they're as they're leaving the oh, floor they're fucking- as they're as they're leaving the floor she tried the team takes a left and she goes straight and tries to go into this dark hallway this this, this to be walkway. alone to have a moment they fucking block it off and heard her Back down the other lane. Oh, to stand there yes. and deal with it? Yes. Oh, that's not cool. See? On the flip side, on the flip side, as much as that's heartbreaking to me, watching the Russians crumble during the last two apparatus and see them visibly shaking and crying, those tears of despair were delicious. Yeah. there's Nothing ever feels better than beating the Ruskies. That's just... That's just <laughs> It's <laughs> just ingrained in us, man. Children of the '80s, man. That's that's not gonna stop. Uh, speaking of children of the '80s, are we done? I, you know what? You, you've warmed the cockles of my heart a little bit. I'm gonna try. I'll spend some. You know what? Maybe tonight. I got fuck all to do. You and me, we'll hang out. We'll watch a little. Olympics. I love. I love it. I love. There the you go. All right, we'll watch a little. I'll watch some games tonight. I'll cheer with you. I might even chant USA if something good happens. All right. All right. Let's uh, let's wrap this thing up like a present. <laughs>
What a uh, what a what a gift for your ears, man. <laughs> that's right. Um, and it comes in it comes in all kinds of packages. It does. You can get you, you, can you get it on your iPhone. You can get it on your Android device. You can get it on your computer. You can get it on your iPad. You can download it as an MP3. You can listen you can to get it, it on it from iTunes. You can get it on Facebook. Whatever package you want it to deliver it in. We're uh, we're like Santa Claus in that we deliver these little gifts all over the globe. Twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Two guys one pod dot com. That's where you can find all of that and more. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this has been the podcast. One, two, three, four. I saw you walk in here with that guitar in your hand. I thought I might ask you what you might be playing. Just one more question. Well, I know you gotta go Me and my friends are drinking I was wondering if you know Any Leonard Skinner Or American Pie Willie and Waylon Magic Carpet Ride I buy Marshall Tucker Or David Allen Coe Play some we sing to Play something we know Well I know how it is dude I used to have me a band To our drummer Ronnie He got on down at the plan Say you got a girlfriend You know how that goes So play something we can sing to Play something we know Do you know any Buffett? Pink Floyd How about some dead dude How about the doors Do you know any Beatles Or any Rolling Stones Play something we can sing to Play something we know Get your ass whooped You keep looking at me that way Man, I don't really mean it There's no need to call security I was only hoping That you sing a song for me Do you know Hank Jr. Or any Steve Earl? How about the Joker On Brown Eye Girl Sweet home Alabama Curtis Love Play something we can sing to Play something we know How about some Neil Young Man, play some Whiskey River, man Play something we know Which we call the, our listeners? Like I listen to Phoebe and they call their people Feebles uh, Kevin Smith's called them Smotties a couple of times We should have a name for our followers Potties? Is that too simple? I don't know. No, it just sounds like pornicorns. Uh, that would be funny, no? But if they're if they're potties, I mean, everybody's going to think it's you know people are pissing in their mouths. <laughs> but if they listen to this, we are shitting in their ears. <laughs>